how you decide to market your brand is how you show up in the world. Just Marketing is committed to making a difference through being and building ethical, anti-racist, and equitable businesses. If we haven't met yet, my name is Meg Brunson, my pronouns are she, her, and Just Marketing combines my mission to build a more accessible and inclusive world with my expertise in the digital marketing space. Let's do this. You are listening to episode number 10, and we are talking about how to ensure your brand colors are accessible. So my stepfather is red, green, colorblind, and growing up, I always found it so fascinating to be able to learn from him about the ways in which he perceives and interacts with the world around him. I remember one day he came out ready to go to work um, wearing this beautiful lilac button-up shirt with a lilac and gray tie with diagonal stripes across the tie. I had never seen him wearing that color before and I loved how it looked. He looked so sharp. So I complimented him and I noticed he was uncomfortable. He was noticeably uncomfortable. And it was then that I learned that he had owned that shirt for a very long time, but that he never wore it um, until now because we were out of laundry apparently that <laughs> that day. Um, but he never wore it because to him, the way he perceives color with his color blindness, the shirt looked hot pink to him, um, which was a color he did not favor. So he only wore it because he had nothing left to wear. And even though I thought he looked amazing, he was significantly uncomfortable because of his colorblindness. And as I've embarked on my Just Marketing journey over the past few years, I've realized how much that history has stuck with me and how much I've been able to apply valuable lessons related to colorblindness and to that story um, in my business. So before we dive too deep into the the big takeaways and action items, I want to talk about some of the facts when it comes to colorblindness. So according to the World Health Organization, roughly 350 million people across the globe have visual impairments of some sort, okay? And that could impact their ability to perceive colors. Interestingly, one in 12 men, including my stepfather, are colorblind. And that number is one in 200 for women. So men are definitely more likely to be colorblind than women are. But there is a decent number of men out there who live with some sort, some form of colorblindness. And because we are just marketers, uh, we know that marketing has to be for everyone. We have to keep people with colorblindness in mind as we are marketing our businesses. So if you consider yourself a just marketer, which I'm guessing you do because you're listening, that means that all of your marketing is produced through an ethical, equitable, and accessible lens. And it only makes sense to keep this huge portion of the population in mind. Colorblind folks aside, grayscale is also a preferable option for people who want to reduce stress on their eyes while browsing online. The more and more we spend online, the more and more these tricks to reduce eye strain are becoming uh, mainstream. People turning grayscale on is a means to be easier on their eyes. So for those who fall within the colorblind population or just those who are interested in taking advantage of that grayscale option, it's important that we as just marketers use proper color contrast in order to make our content accessible. The right color contrast is what's going to make your content readable and understandable. The wrong color contrast, on the other hand, makes your content relatively inaccessible depending upon who's reading it. So when I say color contrast, what I'm talking about is the color of your background and then the color of the font that is on top of it. So this is applicable on your website, on your social media posts, anywhere where you're layering text on top of a background We need to make sure that the contrast between the background and the copy is correct. Now let's talk about that. What does correct mean? What is the right color contrast to use? According to web content accessibility guidelines for your visual content, the ideal contrast between the background and the text color should be at the ratio of 4.5 to 1. 
Now, hearing those numbers, if you're like me, you're like, what the heck does that mean? And how can I figure out what the contrast of my colors is? Now, lucky for us, right, there is a tool called the Web AIM Contrast Checker that is available that makes that whole process super simple. You input your foreground color, you input your background color, and it tells you what the contrast ratio is and lets you know how it fares when it comes to readability and accessibility. I will put that link in the show notes if you are watching or listening. And if you're reading, that was hyperlinked. Go ahead and click on it to check out the color contrast checker. So here are some basic do's and don'ts to get your wheels turning and some additional information that falls on the techie side of things in the realms of color contrast. Do use any color you want to use, all right? Pick any colors that you want to use. But what you don't want to do is use a combination of red and green or blue and yellow in your graphics. So if you really want to use green in your marketing, that's cool. Just make sure that red isn't your secondary color, right? Same thing with blue and yellow. Make sure those are not your secondary colors. The reason is those are the two most um, common, the two most common types of color blindness. And so by using those color combinations, you're instantly making your content less accessible. Now, as I mentioned before, the ideal contrast between background and text is 4.5 to 1. It's also important to note that the larger the text, the lower your ratio needs to be and vice versa. So it seems like a pretty obvious statement, right? The bigger the text is, the easier it is to read. The smaller it is, the harder it is to read. But to take it a step further, that is true for color contrast too. So if there are two colors that are right at that like 4.5 to 1 ratio, And if you make the text bigger, it makes it easier to read with the color contrast. And if you make it smaller, it's harder to read with the color contrast. Does that make sense? So it's not just the size of the text to help for people who need to see larger or smaller content, but also the the degree of contrast changes as the text is increased or decreased in size. So you wanna make sure you're using that contrast checker. Plop in your colors that you use, your typical background colors, your typical foreground colors, and check out what those ratios are. The good news is that tool is very user-friendly. So if you put in a background color and a foreground color that are within your typical brand color guides, and then you find, like I did, that your background color was actually too dark for your main colors to show up on it, there's a little sliding scale right on that website. So you can slide the slider back to change your brand colors so that they comply with these standards. In many cases, these slight changes aren't going to be super noticeable to the people in your your audience who don't need them, right? The people who aren't impacted by colorblindness or or vision um, issues. But for the people who are impacted, those slight changes are going to make all the difference. So I encourage you to make the changes, right, in your branding guides and then going forward in all content that you create. So you want to do that process for your primary foreground colors as well as your primary background colors. And like I said, update any branding guides. Now, here are some additional tips. First, don't rely on color coding alone on graphs and infographics and charts. Instead, you want to combine with patterns and textures and consider using an icon on your buttons so that identifying their presence isn't solely tied to color. So again, these tips deal with the fact that people who have color blindness may not be able to differentiate between colors alone in charts. If you picture like a, a, let's picture a line graph where you've got like three different lines and each line is a different color. People with color blindness may not be able to follow which colors are which color. So if you add something like a pattern or a texture to those lines, so maybe one is bold, one is slashes and one is dotted, right? So there's different patterns, not just different colors. And the same thing with buttons. When you go and look at um, your website in grayscale, which is something I recommend in order to see what your your color contrast looks like to somebody who is either viewing your website in grayscale or has color blindness and may see um, colors that you see as vivid in various forms of gray. So test your designs in your website in grayscale to see what that user experience looks like and make sure that your buttons pop. 
And if your buttons aren't popping, you can either change the color of those buttons or you can add an icon on the button, like an arrow, right? So that identifying the presence isn't solely tied to color. There's additional elements that indicate that that is a clickable button. I also recommend that you visualize links with an underline. Again, this is not relying on a different color text alone. So on many of our websites, we're able to set what hyperlinked text, um, what color that looks like. I know on my website, it is my branded purple. However, my branded purple compared to the normal black text may not pop enough for somebody who has color blindness. So make sure all of the links are also underlined so that they are easily identified as links. It's important to remember that sans serif typefaces are typically easier to read than serif or script fonts. Script fonts, I think, are pretty self-explanatory. They look kind of like cursive, kind of bubbly and wavy and like cursive. Now, serif fonts are fonts that have little lines or, or markings at the end of the different letters. And then sans means without in French, so sans serif typefaces don't have any little lines. They're, they're smooth. Um, if you are reading the blog, that the text of the blog is a sans serif typeface. So you can see that there are no lines or, or decorations at the ends of the different strokes for the typeface. So when it comes to especially your body paragraph and your text, make sure that you're using sans serif fonts instead of serif or script. Text can be difficult to read on images. So if you are using an image and trying to put text over it, it's highly recommended to consider using a solid background or an opaque overlay in order to help that text pop on the image. When we're using an image, it's hard to get that, that contrast checker to work, which is why I typically recommend that you use some sort of a solid background in order to um, allow the, the contrast checker to work. You really wanna make sure that any information on your website or on your social media posts or wherever you are marketing, any information that's conveyed by color, such as using red or green to indicate yes and no, should also be conveyed in another format, such as a pattern or through text. So don't just write um, the things that you do recommend in green and things you don't recommend in red. You also wanna label those lists so that people who have trouble differentiating between the red and green colors can also understand what those different lists mean. I already talked about um, testing your design in grayscale and ensuring all of your buttons and all of your copy and everything that's important. Make sure it all stands out when you're watching or when you're looking in grayscale. And if it doesn't, work on adjusting those colors to make them more accessible. The idea here is to use color to enhance communication, but to avoid relying on it completely in order to convey an idea. We have made Just Marketing accessible to you however you prefer to consume your content. Subscribe and listen on your favorite podcast player. Subscribe on our YouTube channel to watch the videos or read our transcriptions on the blog and you can subscribe there as well. We'd appreciate honest reviews wherever you are listening. And of course, if you would share this content with anyone who is or should be on a just marketing journey. Thank you so much for being with us again today. I appreciate you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.